This is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoint. Now, your host, James Just. Thank you for joining us today. With me is Richard Field and John Cameron, as usual. And gentlemen, what is not usual is our rates of inflation. Um, the shadow stats want John Williams. Sorry, I was actually about to say Juan Williams, not the same person. <laughs> Inflation is now really at 13.5%, which means that the, as Richard, you pointed out behind the show, that that means that our increase in sales is not real. Yeah, no, no. I mean, the, the uh, Yahoo story said that the sales of Christmas season sales are up 8 point something percent. And if you even compared to the uh, officially reported CPI of 6.8% last I looked, it, it's still a minuscule increase in sales considering that we've come off uh, you know a very slow period for sales but if you look at the actual rate of inflation uh, as measured the way that it was measured before they started fiddling with the cpi back in the 90s uh, and john williams at shadow says keeps track of that it would actually be about 13 and a half percent and rising and if you look at the producer price index which everybody's ignoring right now that's something uh, in the neighborhood of 41%. I forget exactly what it is, but producer prices are what go up before consumer prices do. It's the inputs. So we're looking at what's actually uh, a, probably a sales decrease over the Christmas season, as opposed to the happy reporting, hap happily reported, the happy face reported uh, uh, increase by uh, mainstream news sources. And... Uh, that's booting very, very poorly for the uh, for any incumbent politician, particularly any uh, majority incumbent politician, read Democrat for for next year. And uh, you know that's just the way it is. Something they can run from, but they can't hide from, and they'll try to. We've already seen uh, Biden try to blame greedy oil companies and greedy whatever for raising their prices when. Inflation just shows up wherever the the greatest shortage is. And because Biden was shutting down drilling and shutting down uh, oil supplies in every possible way he could think of, that's where the uh, supply that's where uh, supply was constrained first. So oil prices went up first. Great. Now I can blame the oil companies for inflation. It's the same scam that we saw back in the 1970s when Walter Cronkite came on the news every night and said, Exxon or whoever the big oil company at the time was, I uh, had a record profit. Uh, tut tut. Seeing the same, you know, it's the same. It's the same, same play, different, different act. Well, I think I think we should uh, give equal time to politicians and and give them credit for having a record profit. Um, but it's not really profit, you know. Uh, and and I'd love to see greedy politicians. Who are grabbing more and more power and more and more of the economy be blamed for the mess that centralized planning always uh, always uh, comes up with? I mean, um, you know, it's great. Centralized plan planning is great if you if you want to starve Ukrainians or starve Uyghurs, which isn't how you say it. I should get learn how to say their name, but you know, if you want to get anything done, decentralization and laissez-faire is always always proven the best. Always will. So you know. I think yeah, we'll the, it. this is a rest with who, who, who has caused this problem. Well, this is a direct result of the manipulation of the money supply, right? There's so much now money. And then you've not just the manipulation of the money supply. They've manipulated the economy through not just through regulations, through supply chain disruptions, you know, by dictate. And now we've got. And so now we're wondering that the inflation and the economies aren't working properly. Well, no kidding. You've overregulated it. You've shut down the the uh, supply chains, you've disrupted the labor market, <laughs> you've disrupted the money supply market, The adding to it all the disruptions of the housing supply market and all the various other markets that the uh, government has deliberately manipulated, and none of it works anymore. And why are we surprised? But of course, the politicians who are responsible for it 
want to blame somebody else. We'll blame the oil companies. We'll blame other people's greed, but we never blame the government's greed. And that's yeah. And and the mainstream media just plays along uh, and says, uh, "Hear no evil, see no evil." When it comes to politicians, but when it comes to private enterprise, it's all evil. And uh, keep in mind that you, you're talking about manipulation of the money supply. Well, that is, is, it goes beyond mere manipulation. We're talking about a third of all of the money that's ever been created by the Federal Reserve. And I could be off by 10 or 15 percent on that one third. I'm not sure exactly, but a huge percentage of the money ever created since the Federal Reserve came into being and, uh, you know, a, over a century ago was created in the last couple of years. It's, it's absolutely stupendously stupid on the part of the Fed and totally predictable that we get inflation. You can only uh, lower the velocity of money the speed with which money moves between uh, one person and another person by so much. Its velocity has been going down for the last 20 something years, leading to uh, asset inflation instead of uh, uh, consumer price inflation. That can only last so long and it's come to an end. And then I, I think there's a, being the cynic that I am a, a deeper underlying agenda and that's, um, you know, the government does things to screw it up and blame somebody else and assumes more control in order to fix what they've done to screw it up, which they blamed on somebody else and on and on and on and on. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's going to keep happening. You know, just like, uh, you know, the energy problem we have in this country is because uh, the, the Greens spend about a, you know, about a billion dollars a year on anti-nuclear uh, propaganda and pro, quote unquote, uh, renewable energy uh, propaganda. And, um, you know, eventually you get to the point where, where there's not enough energy. And the only way to fix it is, is a nice uh, uh, carbonless nuclear power, but uh, you know, until some more people like like Buffett and um, and Gates get together and privately finance some new, nice clean nuclear plants, uh, it's it's still going to be a problem. I myself am am against this agenda because I like birds, and as I like to point out weekly, if I can, before you guys start muting my mic, um, just Altamont Pass, one location has killed one thousand golden eagles. I'm done. Yeah. Well, and we'll move on. We'll talk about breaking things. Senator Ben Cardin of discussing the build the new version of the Build Back Better bill. He said, a lot of us are going to be disappointed. And I guess the question is, who is us? Who's this us he's talking about? I'm not disappointed if this bid back build back better bill dies a slow and painful death. I'd be happy really happy for it to do that. So when they talk about who is us, who is this us they're referring to? Whoever, whoever is on the receiving end, the, the first, the first uh, row of, re, of receivers of the government uh, read us largesse, largesse from the from taxpayers and inflation taxpayers because inflation is just another tax in effect. Mm -hmm. uh, so the people who in the defense industry, the people who are uh, the recipients of uh, Medicare, Medi-Cal, Medi Social Security, etc., those are the us that he's referring to. They're the people who get government spending first they benefit from it everybody else loses and then also the 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 states that get these clowns elected i.e new york and california benefit uh, because of the you know twisty changes to tax laws that benefit very wealthy people not maybe not the the billionaires but the rest of the wealthy people that give the money to the to these socialists so they can keep getting elected and keep doing this this tomfoolery so they're, you know, without, without, uh, without the, the um, basically government grant to uh, wealthy uh, white taxpayers who fund the, the Democratic Party, um, they wouldn't get, be getting people elected. And they're, they're the first people that benefit from all these things. Or maybe the second, second, Richard pointed out who the first are. Yeah, yeah well, I think when they're talking us, as we pointed out, it's the grifting class. It's the grifter class. But it's also the vote blue no matter who crowd, right? That's who they're talking to. That's who this Build Back Better plan is actually aimed at. It's not aimed at average voters. It's aimed at the vote blue no matter who crowd, you know, that they're they're paying off their loyalty. And that's that's kind of, I think, you know, ultimately what a lot of these policies are actually about. They're not actually about making our lives better. They're about, you know, paying their, uh, their grifters. But speaking about politicians and are the government just completely wasting money 
In the Bay Area, uh, there's a short story here. The Bay Area, the, the CHP brought in a helicopter to catch a bicyclist who ran a red light. At 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, like he, you know, was really causing a huge uh, traffic uh, hazard by running that red light. Of course, I mean, you know, the, the, the real reason is because, hey, uh, maybe there's something else going on. He's uh, probably guilty of some other victimless, may I add, crime. Uh, and the police, uh, anybody that runs, they want to chase him because more than likely it's some drug fiend. And that's what happened in this particular case. The guy supposedly had uh, meth on him or, or, you know, some other uh, contraband. That's why people run from the police. That's one reason why people run. And well, sure, and they should. I mean, why shouldn't somebody run if they're guilty of a crime that her harms no one other than themselves? And if they get caught, they'll be even more harmed. Hmm. Well, if they did the same thing in Davis, uh, where where Richard used to live, the helicopters that the, you wouldn't be able to see the blue of the sky because the number of helicopters required to uh, to enforce laws that all the bicyclists, uh, you know, uh, disregard. But the key here is the the time of day. Um, I, I I'm not saying that that Im, imbibing any kind of drug is wrong, nor will I ever. But you know, very few people get arrested uh, at you know six o'clock in the morning while they're out for a jog or heading to the to the weight room. It's uh, you know those wee hours, the the staying up late hours, where you know typically people get in trouble. So you know you want to avoid trouble. Uh, early to bed, early to rise uh, keeps a man out of jail. You know, basically. Yeah, but John, some of us are natural night owls, and so we operate. Well, uh, the government needs to make that illegal. <laughs> <laughs> some of us need to operate on those opposite hours, and you know, yes, sometimes you yes, have to be out and running yes. about. And yes, just make sure you're not on a bicycle running a red light at that time, because well, hey, at least now if you have a joint in your pocket, you don't go to jail. You know, you have to have something a little more serious, which I suppose is a small favor. But good lord, the fact that we're still putting people in cages because they have because they're hurting themselves is just mm. is absolutely astounding. Mm. It just it, I, it boggles my mind. Yep. Well, and at the risk of sending John here on a uh, a bit of a rant, um, Biden spends seven and a half billion on chargers that electric car owners won't likely use because they're not in places they're going to use the wrong kind of charger. You need adapters. A whole laundry list of reasons that these chargers the government's going to subsidize aren't really useful or as useful as they claim to be. And it's just another part of the grifting game, if you ask me. So well, yeah, I, I, I won't go on a very long rant. I'll go on a little rant. There's three different types of chargers. One that operates on standard household current that you plug your car into and it basically it takes all day uh, to charge. There's another kind that I think it costs about two to four thousand dollars depending on where you are and what the subsidies are and everything. And that's a, and then, then the kind you want is the kind that costs, according to the news article I looked at, and I think it's probably their math is a little bit wrong, about $140,000. So, um, you know, there, there will be no reason for anyone to use any of these chargers unless they happen to put one uh, in right outside your garage, because, you know, you want, if you're gonna have an electric car, you wanna be able to go somewhere and charge it in 20 minutes. And that's why these fast charging stations are, are draws to certain shopping areas because you can park your Tesla there and do a fast charge. Many times it's subsidized by somebody else and then, you know, spend some money and leave. But these things, um, you know, unless unless Biden's get a, getting a deep discount on them, which I'd be shocked by, uh, are going to be completely useless to do what what their stated purpose is which is to make it easier for folks to do the things they need to do with a car, which is sometimes drive long distances and quickly refill the energy source. And that, that's going to be impossible with what he's got. Yeah. I mean, if, if you're, you know, if you're charging uh, overnight, you can charge it at home. No big. Yeah. Uh, if you're uh, charging on the road as you're traveling from, you know, across the country or what, or, you know, around up and down the state, you need to so something that will take a, a lesser amount of time than four hours to charge and the, the fast well, chargers do it in, in, charge too by the way yeah. the fast chargers do it in, in 15 minutes which is about the amount of time you need to go to the bathroom and buy a, a pepsi and, and move on uh mm -hmm. so you know the fast chargers would make sense maybe uh, at one hundred forty thousand. who knows uh but the budget the budgets uh, allocated for chargers 
and the number of chargers uh, proposed to be acquired uh, indicate that they are planning on the mid-range chargers, which take four hours. Mm -hmm. Of course, they'll probably it is, it's probably a situation where they'll actually the, the budget number will get blown up and they'll get the high that you know the fast chargers. But who knows? Who knows? You know. Yeah. It's, and then, according to the guy who's who's really uh, popularized electric vehicles and made them you know very competitive kind of dream machines with astounding performance and and great dependability except for apparently not all of them are all that dependable, if we ever get to that story. Um, uh, it said that well, I don't, we don't need the government to do this stuff. The government doesn't subsidize gas filling stations, gas stations. Why should they subsidize this? You know, the market will provide, you know, I mean. Uh, Which is true. There are some private, there are a couple, three private companies out there already that are in the, are in the business of uh, building out a, an infrastructure of charging uh, stations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what's what irritates me the the most is Honda has finally figured out, you know, the hydrogen cell fuel cell vehicles. They finally figured it out. They're actually now able to produce them a, a, in mass. And yet, as we do that, now the government is going to go in on electric chargers. When in reality, is which one is best is still unknown. You know, for me, the the hydrogen fuel cell vehicles seem like a better long term option than the battery pack vehicles. Now, I yeah. don't know that for sure, but. We're not. We're never going to find that out if the government is subsidizing electric chargers and electric vehicles. You know, the battery-powered vehicles. We're never going to find out which one of those is actually a better solution. And there is another issue with these electric vehicles, these battery-powered electric vehicles. A Tesla owner has decided to blow up his Model S instead of footing the twenty-two thousand dollar repair bill for the battery pack. The battery pack went bad. It's after warranty, and it's going to cost him what twenty-two thousand. 600 bucks to repair it and so he decided it's not worth it so he's going to blow it up as a as a stunt to try and raise some money or something it <laughs> this notion that these fuels these uh battery powered cars are some magical solution is it's utopian thinking and i don't understand why we can't get past that part and actually have the full explanation well in in fairness battery technology has been progressed uh quite a ways since uh, elon musk and others have uh, gotten involved in uh, working on it, but it's not perfect. And uh, the guy in Finland who blew up his Tesla because he didn't want to spend twenty-two thousand nine hundred dollars or whatever it was to replace the battery pack on a, on an older car, uh, you know, is, is testament to the fact that uh, no technology is perfect. Uh, and the I think I think the the the, the uh, ideal solution is to let the market dictate whether it's uh, solar powered or uh, battery powered or hydrogen powered or uh, dead dinosaur powered uh, vehicles that uh, are the most uh, effective and the most uh, uh, popular among consumers. I absolutely agree. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> in a recent uh, article in Town Hall, um, it's, they were, they were, the title was, No Wonder People and Businesses Are Dumping California. And of course, if you look around California, they're being, it's not just expensive and overregulated. It's, it's just operating, just functioning from a business or a personal perspective is insanely difficult. You now can't buy a gas powered generator for your, you know, for your motor home. If you a camper and you live in California, you have to go out of state to order a gas powered generator. We're making, um, gardeners use uh, electric equipment, despite the fact that they're going to have to get like 20 battery packs. It's going to be absolutely insane. And they're just continually regulating, essentially, the ability to operate out of California. And people are fleeing. California has re lost even more population this year than they did last year. So it, at some point, our politicians and our community is going to have to understand this isn't just people leaving. These are families and communities being ripped apart because our government is essentially incompetent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, I mean, California and the media can ignore the fact that there's a cow exit going on, except that uh, finally California is losing a congressional seat because of all of the people leaving the state. And it goes all the way from Elon Musk, who uh, so is selling, you know, has or will be selling his mansions in Los Angeles uh, to live in Austin, Texas. Uh, and and but that that yeah. millionaires leaving the state is, is or billionaires or whatever. That's one thing. Uh, obviously, I think it's what the, the top uh, 
few hundred uh, millionaires pay for half of the budget in California. Don't quote me on the exact numbers, but top, it, top it's one one percent of the the uh, taxpayers pay fifty percent of the tax. There you go. Uh, the, you know that that's that's one problem. But the other problem is the vast middle class, the people who uh, can't get jobs that uh, pay very well, that uh, are just sick and tired of dealing with all of the regulatory agencies. That's where the greatest exit is coming from. The only uh, uh, demographic that's staying are the people who uh, sleep under bridges or otherwise uh, uh, live off the state one way or another. And that's that's not a that's not a that's not a that's not a viable uh, economic alternative for going forward. Well, and the other thing that the other big section of the the other big thing that's causing people to flee California systems while still staying in California is the uh, education industrial complex here that is failing miserably to provide an education for people. And, uh, you know, just last week, I think uh, UCD and Sac State and a bunch of others announced that they were going to start 2022 with uh, only distance learning because of uh, Omicron. And um, so, you know, the decisions that are made here that aren't made in other places, the other places where kids go to school without masks and there aren't vaccine requirements and all the rest of that for kids are, are attracting people, you know, private schools, which actually, you know, teach people things. It's gotten to the point where, where uh, it's at least it's my understanding that even Michael Bloomberg is going to throw a big bunch of money at, at um uh, at fighting the teachers unions in the state of California so that they can start, uh, that schools can start educating kids again, instead of the foolishness that they're trying to do with their time. So if you think uh, about it, it's, it's clear that private education, homeschooling, all the rest works better than public education. Even Elizabeth Warren, back when she was a college professor, uh, figured out the private education was a better deal and supported vouchers. Doesn't now, of course, because that's against the the blue progressive or regressive, as you would say, John uh, Credo. But uh, you know, it, it's it's obvious for anybody that's looking without political blinders on that we have a a failing educational complex, and the only way to fix it is to introduce more competition, which means private education in one form or another. I'd love to see. Uh, government schools, uh, I should always have that quote in front of me, uh, Ms. Patterson, 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 but I don't have it, um, so I'm not going to try to misquote her. I'd love to see government-funded schools compete with other schools on, on head-to-head. Uh, all we, we know from, if anybody watches sports or, or buys a computer or anything else, competition improves things. Competition improves things. It always has. You want to improve your your golf swing. You enter a tournament. You want to you, you want to just improve anything. You know, we compete in and we used to compete in classes for the best grades, and the people who got the best grades were the most improved. So or got, or got put into a gate class, but now gate classes are being discontinued because, well, they're uh, somehow or another white supremacist or Asian supremacist, or you know, that they're not woke enough. Well, and we know we also know from from management science that that the 80 20 rule works. Uh, you concentrate if you want improvement in something, you don't you don't try to take the 80 percent and throw a bunch of money at them to improve them. You take the 20 percent that's actually doing all the work, coming up with all the great ideas, uh, making money for your company and throw training and resources and whatever they want at that 20 percent, because that has the greatest effect. A rising sea lifts all boats. And once we realize that, we'll get out of the way of these people who are willing to put in the work and have the ability, and they'll help us all. Yeah, and one of the things we, we've kind of failed to realize is that competition doesn't necessarily have to be adversarial. You know, as, no, as no, a no. Well, competition leads to cooperation. Uh, you have a more cooperative environment when competition is allowed to flourish. Yeah, well, I know as gig workers back in the day before California got involved, AB5 and has completely screwed up the gig worker economy, is we competed with each other, but we were insanely friendly. We shared tips and, and how to be, do our jobs better and how to be better at it. And how, how we'd actually tell people how to be better at competing against us. We share that information along amongst ourselves. And it made all of us better, which made the whole ecosystem better. Our, our customers were happier. Because we're all better, and so it, it all helped. It, but we, but so we competed against each other. But it wasn't adversarial. 
it was yeah I, I, I my my standard line that i use repeatedly until everybody's bored with it but i'm going to keep again until you mute me on this one you don't you don't see uh target sending uh you know an armed patrol over to walmart to get customers you don't see walmart you know laying mines down uh on the the trucks that are delivering uh goods to target uh you because what happens is you can compete on price, or you can compete on service, you compete on on um, the variety of goods and products. There, there are many places where you can compete. And as those people compete, which they do uh, in you know, Costco, uh, all the rest of the, the mass marketers in this country, the big grocery chains, somebody comes up with a better idea, a less expensive way to do something, a way to deliver a better product at the same price, then all the other people have to find out how to match them or they lose market share. So as James said, everyone gets better. Competition's a wonderful thing. Yeah, and it doesn't even have to, you can actually compete on moral standing. Like what is Zappos would give away a pair, was it Zappos would give away free shoes or something? I forget that. Yeah. They would give away a free shoe every time you bought one. So they didn't weren't competing on price. They weren't really competing on customer service. They were competing on adding moral value, so, so to speak, to their for their customers. They gave their customers something else. And so there's many avenues where you can compete. But because so many of us, when you hear the word compete, you think of it as adversarial. And it becomes this, oh, well, competition is bad because it's adversarial. But it's not necessarily adversarial. We can competition is also as Richard pointed out it's cooperative we have about two minutes left so we cover this one real quick Nicole Hannah Jones who is a member of that 1619 project she goes her quote is I think we're going into a dark age of repression and suppression of the truth which is <laughs> now she's correct just not in the way she thinks she is she's talking about an education how education is suppressing her version of the truth but it's, it is suppressing truth, just not the way she thinks it is. It's suppressing our ability to think. Our ability well, to I don't, think. There's no question that the way that history has been taught for the last 200 years is it's been taught by the victors. The victors of the Revolutionary War were the people uh, that formed the, you know, our founding fathers that formed the country. And they were the people who... Uh, lay down the narrative. The victor always lays down the narrative as to why they won the war. And that narrative has been willing to overlook some of the uh, the faults, the nicks and the dents in, in, in the founding. And not to, you know, slavery, of course, one of the, one of the, the largest uh, uh, gashes in our, our moral history. Uh, but that doesn't mean that everything that we have been taught for the last 200 years is incorrect. Most of what we have been taught is correct. It's just that we need to add to that the history of people who have been underrepresented. We don't need to tear down the edifice of what is right in order to add more things which are correct. And mm -hmm. that's what the 1619 Project is trying to do. They're trying to tear down uh, everything else and put in their own uh, singular version of the truth. But it's not a singular version. It's just a different way of looking at things. And we have to have multiple different ways of looking at things. And that's why this person is correct in saying that uh, we're, you know, censorship is, is a bad thing. It's cutting down her version of the truth, but by the same token, she's trying to, trying to cut down everybody uh, I'm else. I'm sorry, Richard, but we have to get our version of the truth is we are out of time. Thank you for joining us. We will see you next week. And please remember to love everybody. 